Hi, I'm Lucy Mortem. And my name is Ginny. And we invite you to join us every week on Les Mordia, where we discuss our favorite true crime topics. But not just true crime, any and all things dark and mysterious that pertain to the human psyche. Cults, conspiracy, weird pop culture. But hey, we're not professionals and we're often inappropriate. We really bank on you finding that charming, though. (laughs) So turn out the lights, lock the doors, and find us on your favorite podcast app. An Eye for an Eye podcast contains subject matters that many may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everybody. It's a good fucking night. Yeah, it is. (laughs) I'm your host, Lisa, and I am with my trusty sidekick, Peanut. I'm just kidding. Hi, right, Penny. <laughs> Matt. I'm here too. What's up, everybody? And we are your favorite local. No, look why. None of you guys are. Well, actually, a lot of you guys are probably local. Because we're pimping all over the world. <laughs> yeah, we're back with your podcast, Eye for an Eye, with another case. Um, yeah, showing the love. We had a few cool launches this week. Yes, we, we did. Whoops. We launched our merch store which will be in the description if you want some cool stuff it's amazing so much cool shit you guys yeah. i am blown away by the designs the logos and what we've come up with i mean it's seriously it's amazing i'm i'm pumped if you guys see me out here rocking a fire shirt or a hoodie or drinking from this <laughs> awesome mug yeah this mug is legit as hell i didn't think it was gonna come as legit as it's like can you hear that that's the sound of fucking greatness. That's what that is. That's what that is. In that case is, you weren't aware. <laughs> that's our mug. Um, and huge, huge, huge shout out to Rachel Gregorino, who is our graphic designer, who made the three logos the that genius, you will see the genius on herself. all of our merch. Oh, she literally, awesome. we asked her to make us one logo, which is the logo you see on you know, our podcast. It's our podcast logo. Um, and she sent us three amazing designs. Literally, I sent them all to Matt. I'm like, Matt, we need them all. <laughs> yeah, we were like, uh, just get all three. That's yeah, fine. I was all three like, are great. Um, thank you. Can I have them all? Great. Yes. So Good ask job. her for one. She's amazing. So if you need any graphic design work, please go shout her out. She's amazing. She's also a huge true crime fan. So that's how I found her. Check out her information's also in the show notes. So if you want some merch, which you can see me rocking on our Instagram and Twitter and Facebook pages. All eye for eye pods, so go follow us. Really? <laughs> no idea what that was. <laughs> Bean, it's gonna go fucking crazy record now. Record that. Record that again. I'm sorry. That it's okay. Um. So yeah. So go follow us. Go get some merch. Rep eye for an eye. I'm telling you, these are conversation pieces. All right. We back. We back. We back. <laughs> I feel like one of those like radio people that talks real close to the microphone like this. All right, you're here with your favorite late night radio host, DJ, your boy, Maddie Ice, <laughs> and my co host, the lovely Lisa. How See, are we doing? My name is tonight? stupid. I need a fun name. Like, Maddie Ice is fun. Maddie OD. OD. What the fuck is like, Maddie I have Ice. No, Can someone give me a nickname that's like great? Come up with something. Um, but yeah, so I was rocking my merch today, our merch today at work, and someone literally said, Oh, that looks so cool. What, what is that? Where's that from? And I said, Actually. <laughs> It's our podcast's logo. Eye for eye podcast. Wink, wink. And then we talked about what the podcast is about. Does the punishment fit the crime? And then we talked about a crime. So it is a really good conversation piece because people are like, where the hell did you get it? One of the logos is the main logo. One of the logos is like a tribal looking. Someone said it kind of looks Illuminati-ish. It does kind of. Mm-hmm. Like it looks kind of like a cult symbol, uh, well, which, that, you know, it might be. You know, we don't hate that. <laughs> <laughs> um... Also, more announcements. We have a giveaway going on. If you want to enter the giveaway, please check out our Instagram page. <laughs> Excuse me, which again is I for I Pod, and that is going to be really exciting. We're announcing the winners to that on March twenty fifth, which is a Sunday. We'll do that live. I think that would be fun to like put all the names in a hat. So basically, to get one entry, so so what you win is a pair of Studio Sweden headphones, so the tray version. Um, so they're wireless Bluetooth headphones. They're amazing. They actually look a lot like um, the Beats I used to own, but they are more stylish, I'd say, and that is the whole goal. They combined comfort and tech to give you the best of the best. 
And we can attest to that Matt has also studio headphones, and they're, this quality is amazing. I went for a run tonight, wore my headphones. They were awesome. They are noise blocking and loud as hell. <laughs> I love that when I'm running. If I'm that annoying guy that runs out in traffic, uh, <laughs> so be it. But they're awesome. Seriously, I love So if Matt gets hit by a car, sorry. Not anyone else's fault. It's my fault. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm definitely that guy. Um, but the contest is as follows. So we also got stickers, which Matt, I have to show you. They're upstairs. I forgot. Um, they're really cool looking. They're, again, our logos. Um, but so you'll get three of our stickers, so one of each, and then you'll get the free pair of Bluetooth headphones from us. The way you enter one entry is tagging someone in the post that we put up regarding the, the, um, the giveaway. And then to get five entries, because we're going to write your name like five times on a piece of paper, leave us a review and give us a rating. So... Um, on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to us, we'll find the review. That's how you enter. So five entries for a rating and review, one entry for tagging a friend. We've already had some amazing people enter. Of course, El Nino is one of the top, of and I'm course. so excited about it. Pretty reasonable expectations, too. A lot of these are simple yeah. things to do if you guys can all help out. For a free pair of nice yeah, headphones. Yeah, man, I mean. And, and you can enter as many times as you want. Obviously, we're not going to stop you. Spreading the word's really important. Obviously, leaving reviews, we've harped on that, is super important to us and our podcast's growth. It's not just to inflate our egos, although it does kind of. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, a little bit, which we're super pumped about. Yeah, so Muffins will be here. The, the, um, I love Muffins. The famous Muffins. Love so it. Muffins and El Nino are the most famously talked about fans on the show. We love awesome. them both. I wouldn't say she's our toughest critic because... She's just the most honest so far because instead of saying, like, great podcast, she's like, great podcast, but sound. Not that we don't love the great podcast reviews, too. <laughs> yes, we love we it all. We do. You guys are really happy with us, and we're really happy with that. So, so that's okay. rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends. You could win a pair of headphones for doing so, and you could also be on the show. So keep a lookout for more announcements from us. There's going to be more coming soon. But let's get in today's case, Matt. Woo! Let's fucking do it. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash eye for iPod. Over 180,000 titles to choose from from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So, uh, one question that's really bugging me. Why did you take the key in the first place? So, I want to see you. Yeah, but that... Okay, I wanted to see you and probably talk to you. I knew you wouldn't let me in otherwise. Yeah, but that's not good because it's putting us in danger. You could have flipped at any point. What about if... Oh, what about if I took... What about if I took someone home or something and then you came in and saw that I was with someone else? Oh, I just would have left. Well, you, but you left anyway. Yeah, I know I did. But it's just... It's just, I yeah, you, you had no right at all to... Oh, no, I didn't. I oh, know I've got no right or nothing. I know that. Well, I, I still... I, you need to apologise to the girls because it is it's out of order. Yeah, I know. I just don't want to be in trouble because the last thing I want is to <laughs> that. Yeah. Well, just as long you just just don't do it again. And if you come near the house again, I'll... No, I, won't, I won't come near the house again. I won't contact you again. Okay. I just I think that I think that's best because it's just going to keep okay. on going around this vicious circle, isn't it? All right, Matt. Let's so let's get into Shane or Grace's case now. There's not a lot of background on her that I could find, at least through my research, Mm -hmm. regarding, like, her birthday, you know, like, the the classic background information we normally provide. So, the little background we found was Shayna had met Michael Lane in 2015 when they both worked at Brighton Fire Alarms. Now, Lane was from Thornhill Road in Portslade in the UK, so shout out to our UK fam. We love you all. Um... And shout out to my new nieces. I love them so Ooh, much. They're, they're so beautiful. Oh, Congratulations, they're the most beautiful. Emily. Yes. So, for those who don't know, my best friend lives in England. So, shout out to everyone at the UK. Um, in the UK, you have a special place in my heart. And this case does take place there. And I'm mm. Irish, so that's fine. <laughs> so, 
They formed a special relationship, and Lane had become pretty obsessed with her, Matt. Now, I know new relationships. So, they were younger, right? So, um, it didn't say her birthday, but it did say she was, I believe, 18 when all of this went down. Um, very, very young. It's so, that's another reason. Oh, she's 19 years old. So, she's 19 when this all went down. And this happened in 2015, yes. Um... Young love. It seems to be so many of these cases that the theory is that, you know, they're young and they're so much... But it's so many times, and we'll talk more about this later, but it's so many times I think it just gets misinterpreted by one side of mm-hmm. the... Equation. Yes. And it's always one, something. like, it's it's young love. And then yeah. sometimes I, this happens and then one side becomes a little bit more obsessive, a little bit more controlling. Um and, and Sheena was astute to that. As you heard in the beginning of the show, she called him and she kind of put her foot down and said, you know what, I, I'm not comfortable with the way you're treating me. Please don't come to my house. Um, you know, I, I, she broke up with him. She broke it up with him. And she, yeah, so, so she broke, she, a lot of girls have trouble getting out of abusive relationships. A lot of people have trouble getting out of abusive relationships. I was one of those people. Um Thank goodness it never got to this point, not even close. But, you know, I had an ex who was verbally abusive to me, and I made every excuse in the book to stay with him. Every single person on the planet Earth was like, get the fuck out of that. And I'd make excuses. I spent more time defending him than I did actually like being in the relationship. Um, so Shayna did take the reins in her relationship. She realized the signs right away. She realized it was unhealthy. And Matt, she dipped. She was like, uh-uh, hell no. Give her credit for that. Yeah, and so apparently Michael Lane said to friends, mutual friends of the both of them, uh, that she'll pay for what she's done because he refused to accept the fact that she had broken things off with him. And and that's very scary. <laughs> that's just a very scary it's part scary. of it's a It's a precursor to what happens well, next. Well, she returned to an ex-boyfriend or something, someone who she'd been with yeah. previously named Ashley Cook. Um, and that obviously was probably set him off. a trigger. Yeah. Set him off to some degree. But, I mean, this guy was clearly over-the-top obsessed. It, it's alleged that he put a tracking device in her car, which notified his phone every time her car... Which I didn't even know those existed. I didn't realize you could buy those at least on the street level. I mean, I figure the government probably has something like that. The police probably have something like that. I'm sure there are illegal things like that. I'm sure parents would like to have something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm sure some crazy ex-girlfriends that I know would have liked to know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> and that's exactly what they're going to Yeah, <laughs> Please. they're coming for him. Yeah. But yeah, he put a trap, like that is scary. I wonder if she knew at the time. I mean, obviously she would have ripped it off if she knew, but like, I wonder if she had any inkling that she was being watched in her vehicle. That's what I'm wondering about, if she really Or like what how... kind of tracker it was, like if it was like a sticker that just like showed her GPS location, well, if it was like a video. she called and said on that audio, it's not appropriate for you to come by the house and you're freaking out the girls, whoever she was living with. Yeah. And that's just, you know, clearly there was some obvious boundaries here that he was crossing yeah i don't know if anybody would be okay with finding out that somebody had their car. <laughs> i would flip the fuck out if yeah. someone put a tracker in my, even if it was my parents i'd be like oh I'd hell like, no what the hell are you doing and that's it's just such a violation of trust as well and i think that was a huge i mean it's just all abuse that's what it is that's we can't share to it, yeah, it it's it all abuse. boils down to abuse well she finally decided to report this on february 8th 2016 she complained to the police about being stalked by Lane after receiving unwanted flowers and finding that her car had been damaged. Isn't that such a, like, a juxtaposition of stuff? Like, such a random... I mean, he gave her flowers and then he busted her car. And Shane is just supposed to be like, okay, yeah, this is acceptable. My car's fucked up, but thanks for the nice flowers. <laughs> like, yeah, like, what the fuck? The car's <laughs> expensive, bro. The flowers were 12 bucks. Yeah, you can tell that th- obviously there's some instability in his mind. He's obsessed with her. He's not willing to accept the fact that she n- wants nothing to do with him. Um, so, and, and we see that a lot in these kind of relationships. And that's why these cases are so scary and so creepy because it just crosses so many lines, but nothing can be done about it. You know what I mean? It's hard to get someone to take a stalking case seriously, which we'll see here right now. Right. Well, 
Sorry, yep. go ahead. No, you go. It's all you. Oh, uh, no, I, I didn't know if, uh, if you had another comment. Oh, uh, don't. Also, lovely. Uh, so, a month later, a little over a month later, on March 24th, Michael Lane snatched her phone and grabbed Shayna's hair. So, now we've we've graduated into assaulting her. Yes. So, now, first it's tracking her. Um, I'm verbally abusing her, being just all around creepy piece of shit. And now he's attacking her. And that's that's showing he's comfortable hurting her. And this blows my mind. He was arrested, but it was only on suspicion of assault. And then was later released on that because, allegedly, Grice had not told the police that they were in a relationship prior to that. So she was issued a fixed penalty notice by the police for wasting their time by not telling them that she'd been in a relationship with him before this had happened. Now, ain't that some bullshit? Ain't bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. that about a bitch? What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how is that possible? She's already had hands laid on her, and they're saying, hey, man, quit wasting our time, except in front of her. If you didn't catch that, literally what happened was she reported him to the police but because she didn't disclose that they were in a relationship prior, they fined her. They charged her with basically wasting the place this time. How is that? Because in apparently being in a relationship completely negates abuse. It's like what? To me. Are you kidding me? Like that we're gonna talk about that later. What I'm saying is there's a lot of eye for an eye that needs to be discussed here. Yeah. So so she literally got a charge for reporting him. And so that of course added some serious distrust to the law, to the to the police. She she felt that she couldn't trust them. She felt that they would accuse her of lying again or being in a relationship with the abuser and so therefore somehow making it an invalid claim and that she would be charged again. So Matt, on July 9th, Lane used a stolen key to let himself into her home and watch her while she was sleeping. Jesus. He admitted this. And what she had reported was she was actually awake and heard his footsteps and she hid under her duvet cover and she she reported hearing him breathe in her room. Shortly afterwards, the person that she heard in her room left and when Grace looked out her window instantly afterwards because of course she wants to see what the fuck just happened, she saw Lane walking away, called the police again and he was arrested for theft and given a police caution to stay away from Shayna. So again, slap on the wrist, not even, kind of not taking it seriously. That's fucking creepy. He stole a key to her house, broke in, and watched her sleep. Arrested and released after breaking and entering. Well, I mean, he stole a key, which is also theft. Yes. That's breaking and entering, right? Can you imagine how this frustrating this This didn't happen in the U.S. Be? too, so I don't know exactly what their statutes on that yeah. are. But, like, you can't just go into someone's place I'm pretty sure permission. that's illegal everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that that's not illegal. I'm saying you can't go into someone's place without permission without that being some type of breaking and yeah. entering. I mean. It's just, it just feels like every single ball that could have been dropped was dropped. And I see that again and again and again and again on these cases. It's literally like, unless the person ends up dead, sorry. You know Whoops. what I mean? Sorry. And at that point, it's like, oh, shoot. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, it's, oh, we missed all the signs. We should have taken it seriously. But let's get into it because we're going to hear some of that here soon. Um, so he was arrested for theft. He was given a police caution, which whatever the fuck that is, is pretty much a slap on the wrist, I'm from my understanding. Seriously. And he was told to stay away from Shauna. Now, if you are an unstable human being to the point where you are stalking someone, watching them sleep, smashing their car and assaulting them physically – telling people that you're not going to stop because if he can't have you, no one can, and they're giving you a slap on the wrist, you're not going to follow that. You're not going to follow and someone's just like, oh, just stay away from her. Get away from her. Don't don't follow her. Like, what? What is that? What does that even mean? So the following day after his arrest for the theft of breaking into her house and watching her sleep like a fucking creepy-ass motherfucker... She received around seven phone calls from a blocked number, including one with heavy breathing. So he's like scary moving her up right now. Yeah. He's scream to 100%. He's calling her and just breathing into the fucking phone. He's clearly trying to intimidate and scare her. That's the point. You know what I mean? He's crossed the line from if, if you want to be with, like you'll be with me or no one else. And now he's into fucking 
crazy person territory. Crank calling her too. Like, what is he? And doing? breathing, like, of course, like the only purpose to that is to scare someone. Right. That's that's it, and and that's horrible, and that's. Oh, it's just so frustrating, and it's so scary because you can tell she knows she's in danger, and nobody is taking her seriously. Nobody's taking her complaint seriously, all because they had a relationship, Matt. Isn't that like how all stalking begins? It's so either I mean, you're famous yeah, or I, not, or how it's did your you boyfriend. Expect them to become obsessed with that person, like exactly not knowing anything about. If them. they're not famous, I'm pretty sure it's because they had a relationship of some sort prior. Right. And that's what she reported, and that's the other part that's kind of insane to me that that this was all came out how it did Crazy. so she again called the police and said you know help this guy is still contacting me you told him not to he's crossing these lines he's calling me and breathing and she was told there were no further lines of inquiry and that the case would be left on file i believe i do have audio clip of this somewhere which i will find here in a second um, but just let that sink in. Let that simmer. Let that cook for a minute. Think about that. She was second. literally reporting this guy for what? The umpteenth time. Yeah. And they said, sorry. Same person, same type of incident, same problems. It's, this is what they treated it It's like. seriously unfathomable. And I can't even imagine how enraged everyone is from this case. I'm enraged. This is no horrible. No further lines of inquiry are available. What is that? I mean, we know who did it. It's not a question of that. And it, it's supposedly, you know, it's difficult to build a case. Well, this guy's presenting with all the evidence. I mean, he did it. He broke in. He and and it. Shana did what she's supposed to do, and she called the police to get help. Right. I mean, He like, committed a crime, and for whatever reason, no one's taking it seriously because he was her previous boyfriend. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Do they not know that the number one suspect in every murder case ever is the significant other? Right. Right? Like, what, are, what in the world? So... On July 12th, she reported to police that she was being followed by and yet again made another report about this motherfucker stalking her. And police treated the case as, of course, low risk, but that investigating officer would be made aware. Oh, but that, okay. Police treated the case as low risk, of course, because for whatever reason, they're very good at blowing off serious, serious inquiries and cases. But they said that the investigating officer on her case would be made aware. So they just left him a post-it, you know, hey, by the way, that motherfucker's back stalking that girl. Just FYI. Just just let you know. Don't need to follow up or anything. Just just so you know that this guy's clearly unhinged and unstable and following this poor girl. And she's called us about 100 times about it. And That's what's crazy. How many times do you have to have somebody tell you, hey, we know who did it. We know what happened. We know it's going to happen again. Please yeah. make it stop. And it happens again. It's just, it's so scary because how do you ever trust the police system after this if you are in this situation and you're calling for help well, to you the people what? who are supposed to help you? I don't entirely blame the police. And not in this case, but in a lot of other cases. Not In this case, there's a lot of blame to be dished out there. For I was going to say, what? No, no, no. In, <laughs> in this other, case. In, a, in other cases, a lot of these other cases, people don't leave the relationships of their own volition. So, yeah. you know. It's hard. They can only do so much. But the in this case, she did. police can take someone out of the situation and, then, you know, they go back the next yep. day for their stuff and, I oh, agree. they're living there again. Yep. Oh, okay, we worked it out. Oh, okay, good. Well, yeah, three days later, you're back. Same problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, so to this point, I mean, I, I 100% agree with you. I think I'm not at all saying all cops are to blame always in stalking cases. I'm saying in this particular case, they dropped the ball. I'm not necessarily blaming it on them, but they dropped the fucking ball, that's for sure. So, Matt, that's clearly Shayna's at her wit's end. She's scared. She's nervous. She feels like someone is going to hurt her, and by someone, I mean Michael Lane, and she doesn't know what to do. She's reported this guy to the police a hundred gazillion times, it seems like. Every single time, it's kind of written off as, oh, like, he'll go away. Oh, he was your ex. Like, whatever. So, like, that's a factor, yeah. That's when, where yeah, it started from. <laughs> so, when Shayna saw Lane loitering outside her home on August 4th, she didn't call the police. She was, she was over calling the police. They weren't doing anything, they weren't taking her seriously. So, she called her best friend, Joanne Pumphrey. And she told Joanne that she was afraid that the police wouldn't believe her because of her previous fine for wasting the police's time. So, she was now not only afraid of Michael Lane, but afraid of reporting. Michael Lane because she did not want to be fined. She didn't want to have another hefty fine thrown on her head 
because she reported being scared of her ex. So she decided not to call the police on that August 4th night when she saw him loitering outside of her home. Now, although Joanne was a witness to this, Shana still didn't report it to the police. So Joanne was there yeah. when he was loitering outside, saw him with her own eyes too, but Shana was still so nervous to report this to police due to how they've handled everything thus far. She decided, you know what, they're not going to listen to me. I'm just going to get another fine. I'm scared. No one's helping me. What's the point? What's the fucking point? Well, you know, they're not taking it seriously. Thing. What is the point? Um, so they didn't report that to the police. So I do want to interject really quickly, though, before we get into what happened here. I want to say for all you listeners of Eye for an Eye podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. This is pretty awesome. I mean, this is... And we know that you guys like listening pod- I mean, listening to things because you're right here, right now. Right. If you're on here, this is the best way to listen to it. Audible is the best and brightest in this technology. So this week, I have actually was just finishing up a book, a uh, James Patterson novel. I love James Patterson. My favorite of his characters is Alex Cross. The book I was most recently was Cross the Line, where... The favorite character, Alex Cross, chases a cold-blooded killer with a conscience, which is a little bit different from what he's usually into. We know our listeners are true crime fans, and so we know you'll love the series. Download this audiobook or one of the many other audiobooks in this genre, some of the other great ones. Girl on the Train was amazing. So awesome. Such a recent book, but so good. The Hobbit, all available on Audible, too. Divergent which is Veronica Roth novel. It's the uh, Divergent series. If anybody has not seen the movie starring our girl Shailene Woodley. A hey. hey. Awesome, awesome book series and great, great stories. Uh, so I definitely recommend them. Um, other great books you can listen to are Lean In by Cheryl Stam- Sandberg, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, Crush It, Why Now is the Time to Cash In on Your Passion by Gary Vaynerchuk, but these are all amazing books that you can find on Audible. Literally every book I've ever read past and now that I'm listening to them on Audible present, um, I found on Audible. They have an amazing selection, over 160,000 audiobooks. It's amazing and we love them so much. We are offering you a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook download. If you would like to take advantage of this offer, please go to Audible Trial dot com slash i for ipod again that's audiotrial.com slash i for ipod for your free audiobook and 30 day free trial check it out guys i 100 percent know you'll love them absolutely guys please take the time look it up it's worth a 30 day free trial how often do you get this come on <laughs> all right so getting back into this case now on august 25th lane waited until grace was alone at home let himself in, and slit her throat and set fire to her bedroom. She was just 19 years old at the time of her murder, and Lane was 27 years old. Her body was found by Ian Cook, who was her boyfriend's father, so Ashley Cook's father, in her home at Chris Dory Road, Portslade, East Sussex. So Michael Lane obviously was known as the suspect immediately she's only reported him a hundred billion times so it was no no surprise to cops and the like who who was responsible for this so michael lane was arrested the same day at his then workplace in burgess hill he initially lied to police about his movements that day before admitting that he did go to sheena grace's home he claimed that he had found the front door open and then found sheena's body in her bedroom he claimed that he panicked, and then he left the scene without dialing 999, which is the British 911, checking Shana's vital signs or telling his family what he had found. So basically, he said he noticed her door was unlocked, let himself in, which he wasn't supposed to be doing anyways because the cops told him to stay the fuck away from her, let himself in, claims he found her dead, and left without calling the police, without notifying her family, without notifying an ambulance, without caring, just left. He also admitted to hiding his trainers, which were covered in blood in a field. He said he had thrown away the t-shirt he was wearing when he discovered the body, which, what the, why? Why would you need to fucking throw away your t-shirt and your shoes? And why were your shoes covered in blood? 
what, like, what, what an idiot. You it's, know what like I mean? Some of this stuff is just ridiculous. He, he, he lied at first about being there, then he doesn't dial 999. Stop it. He didn't do anything, basically. Come here. He didn't do anything to cover his tracks except lie about Come it. Here. Which, I mean, I hate to say cover his tracks because that makes it sound like, you know, you're almost complicit, but he really didn't do anything except lie and say, oh, you know, I was never there. And I mean, I was... It was stupid okay, lies. I was there, but I uh, I was covered in blood. <laughs> so I, I took off my shoes because I, I, I... But I didn't want to call you guys. But I didn't do it. I just I found it. I didn't do it. Way. I just found it that way. And like, I didn't like that fire. Like, I mean, yeah. it's a whole bunch of bullshit, obviously. But still, I mean, it's like, it's almost pathetic. This idiot really tried this after all the... Like, are you kidding me? They found your shoes covered in blood and you threw away your shirt. Like, are you that stupid? Yeah. And he claimed that he only kept quiet about what he had seen because he was afraid of being accused of her murder. Well, murder. Well, fucking die you would be. Of course you'd be accused of her murder they because you did fucking it. did it. Yeah. Ding, um, ding, ding. We have the winner. Yeah. And so the prosecution alleged, this is their version of events, that Lane waited for Mrs. Grice's housemates and boyfriend, Mr. Cook, to leave the house before he went into her house to kill her. And he attempted and failed to cover up the murder by starting a fire. So walked in, attacked her, killed her, lit her house on fire, thinking that that would cause the evidence to go away because apparently he's never seen any crime show ever. So the prosecution alleged that Lane had used Mrs. Grice's bank card to draw money out of her account the day she died. So not only is this moron throwing away his shoes and a shirt and telling that to police when they're questioning him willfully, he said, I guess I threw away my bloody shoes. And they're like, okay, why the fuck were your shoes bloody, you dumbass? Like, what, what the hell? And then he uses her bank card? He said he found her dead. And he stole now he's using, wallet. And, and he steals. You know what I mean? It's well, like I'm gonna go get some cash. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? So it's just ridiculous. And CCTV images show a man in a baseball cap, a hooded top, and high vis jacket withdrawing sixty pounds from a cash machine. So not I'd only just like did he to point out, he only took out sixty pounds. Right, like this motherfucker is just this stupid dude's all idiot. around. He's he he so didn't even buy enough for a plane ticket. And he, he was just trying to sit around. And we're in fucking 2016 Ugh. or 15. Did he not realize that there's cameras everywhere, you big fucking balloon of an idiot? Yeah, I mean, like... Like, this homie has rocks for brains. Like, are you joking me? My dog could, could commit a better crime. She would never because she's perfect, but... We love you. <laughs> so, Lane agreed that it was likely the man in the footage had killed the teenager, but denied that it was him and said he could not remember the pin to Mrs. Grace's card, although he admitted to having previously previously used it. So this guy literally must have rocks for brains. Miss Grace. He's right. like... A miss, right? did I, yeah, I said I miss. I said miss. Oh, I thought you said missus. I'm sorry. No, miss. Miss. Um, Miss Grace. Uh, um, so basically, they're questioning him, and he's admitting to everything, but like also saying, I didn't kill her, but yeah, my shoes are covered in blood. Yeah, I threw away my shirt. Yeah, I stole her bank card, but I don't remember a pen. And that CCTV footage... For sure was the person who did it. However, that person is not me. Like, you big idiot. Clearly it's you. Like, what are you... You can't... It's a video. Can you... Are you that stupid? That's what I'm saying. Like, like it's what incredible. What defense here, bro? It's incredible. So, the trial lasted two weeks, in, of course, in the Lose Crown Court. No surprise here. He was found guilty and sentenced to life with a minimum term of 25 years. So, 25 to life was his sentence. Now, there was some aftermath... That came of this because obviously this case was just mind boggling that this was reported to the police a hundred times. I mean, it's and no almost one did anything. like the trial itself was almost pathetically short. Like, there was yeah. so much evidence against this. Because this, dude. this idiot was like, at every turn, he was com- like, um, basically admitting it. He was just saying, yeah. like saying, oh, yes, I was there. Oh, yes, I did this. But it wasn't me. And then lying about it. Yeah, yeah. stupid. So. Idiot. Shauna Grace's parents, Sharon Grace and Richard Green, said their daughter would still be alive if Sussex police had acted on her complaints, which I agree with. We'll talk about in a minute here. The judge, Justice Green, everyone's last name is Green apparently, also criticized police. During the sentencing, he said there was seemingly no appreciation on the part of those investigating that a young woman in a sexual relationship with a man could at one and the same time be vulnerable and at risk to serious harm. The police jumped to conclusions and Shana was stereotyped which is 100% accurate, I think. 
Um, they literally find her because she reported her boyfriend as if a boyfriend cannot hurt her girlfriend. It doesn't matter if they were exes, if they were married. Why didn't they take this seriously? Why didn't they take this seriously? So that, that I 100% agree with that. The judge agreed with it, and so did Sheena's parents. Now, the Sussex police apologized to Sheena's parents and referred themselves to the Independent Police Complaints Commission, which had launched an inquiry into why in the hell nobody took these complaints seriously. In late April 2017, so just this past April, Sussex Police accepted six recommendations for the IPCC to improve the way the force dealt with stalking. Amen. It's scary to me, Matt, that this was last year. That's what I'm saying. This is a This very is not like the case. 1990s. This is not like 2001. This was last year. Yeah. Even, I mean, you're talking about 15 years ago. Why are we not taking stalking seriously? And again, this is in the UK, so it may be a little bit different here. It's not. No. And it's not. And we'll go over more cases about it. But this is is incredible that this was just in 2017, which is just here a year ago. Now, IPCC Associate Commissioner Tom Milsom said that Sussex Police had taken a positive response to the recommendations. And he said that, and I quote, Stalking and harassment are serious offenses, and in certain situations, such as those involving, such as those involving Shana, can have tragic consequences. So, Detective Superintendent Jason Tingley of the Sussex Police said that additional training was already being provided, and that they had improved their understanding of what stalking and harassment is, and what our response should be. I think it's a little too late. For that as a response, I mean, I guess we could be happy that they're improving and they're and they're really trying to, well, at least they're saying they're really trying to make changes on how they review stalking cases and how they take care of them. But like I said, it was 2017 when all this happened, 2015 when the case took place. I think it's this this shouldn't be something new. This should be trained when you first become a fucking police officer. Sorry. I think this should honestly have been one of the first mandates that police get is how to deal with domestic violence mm-hmm. situations. But I think we can also talk about that in Eye for an Eye portion. Yeah. And so one of the most infuriating parts of this case is not only did Shana report Michael Lane, he had been the subject of police complaints from 13 other women. Wow. 13 other women reported this motherfucker piece of shit to the police for stalking, for abuse, for harassment, and somehow, still, they did nothing, and now someone is dead because of it. That is pathetic to me, honestly. I mean... Think of how many individual reports there must have been on that guy alone. One of these reports was three years before her murder, and one of them was ten years before her murder. So this is not new shit. This had been going on since this motherfucker was, like, twelve. This dude was a forever problem, basically. Yeah, he's a predator. He he's a, he seriously has some issues, clearly. Um, he's a murderer. He's a stalker. He's a creep. And for whatever reason... Even though he was reported 13 different times, never was taken into custody. Never more than a slap on the wrist until he kills someone. Little too late, police. Little too late. Yeah, it's pathetic. So let's talk about eye for an eye. So 25 to life. Let's talk about a sentence first because that's that's what we're here for mainly. What do you think? I believe that he should be spending the rest of his life in jail for murder and that anybody like this should be reported to the police and treated as a serious threat because obviously if you're willing to say it, you're willing to do it. I think a lot of people have shown that over the years. I don't believe that we have the point and the luxury anymore of acting like, oh, well, you know, just because they say it. I think if you really have a situation like this where somebody has enough, I mean, this was pathetically bad. I mean, but if anybody has multiple women or even multiple complaints from the same woman of violence... Or, or even men. Like, if someone's reported a hundred times... Yeah, I shouldn't just generalize and say just women on men, but... Because Lord men knows men, there's some, there's some cuckoo women, women, women out there. There's some crazy people out there. <laughs> Anybody knows anyone that's being abused, too, please, and we'll put a link, a link here yeah. for the domestic abuse hotline, but please, please... Make the phone call. I mean, you you might save someone's life. Seriously, if yeah. you know somebody that you're 
even a little bit unsure about, like, I'm not sure, but I think there might be something yeah. going on at home. Even if the police don't seem to be listening to you and don't take you seriously, it needs to be on record. It needs to be reported because that's the only way we can take action against these people is exactly. if there's a record. Um, it, it just hurts me so bad that, that the Sussex police dropped the ball so hard on this one. I know we can't completely blame them because they did not choose to have this demented um, person in society. However, if he was reported 13 times, what, six of those from Shauna herself? That is a... Problem. Problem. And I, to be honest, I think everybody on the force that we're dealing with her call should be let go or severely retrained or punished. Because that's that's ridiculous. Because of your negligence, someone is dead. That's what it is. It came down to negligence. They completely stereotyped her as just a, a girlfriend that was, I guess, angry. I don't even fucking know. I don't even know how you messed this up so bad. But they did. And I think they should be held re- accountable for it. And it sounds like they are being held accountable for it. As far as for eye for an eye for Lane goes, I do believe the punishment fits the crime in this case. Um, as far as what he was sentenced, 25 to life. If he gets out in 25 years, then we'll have a different discussion. I think that bastard should spend the rest of his life in jail. He's clearly a threat to others. He's done this more times than not. That's that's my idea on it. Yeah, we, at that age, how many healthy relationships can you have had with that many people having complained about you? you know? Right? So I just don't, I don't feel like he should get out of jail, at least not until he's old and gray and can't hurt anybody anymore. Um, because clearly he has this, this behavior ingrained into his soul, into his mind, and he is just a shit human being. So that is the case of Shauna Grimes. I, I hope Shauna rests in peace, and I hope her family does find solace through um, the police changing their policies on stalking, and I hope they get somewhere with the suit that they filed against the ICPP or the IPCC or whatever the fuck it's called. IPCC. Yeah. Yes, and to Shauna Grice and to all the other victims of domestic abuse, we support you, we're with you. Please, somebody, if you have anybody that you know that you are worried about, take action, please. Absolutely, and like Matt said earlier, the information for the resources that we have found um, that can help you or our loved ones, um, it will be in our show notes as always. We always have links in our show notes. If you go back through our episodes, you'll always see some kind of note regarding either the case or even just notes that we think are important um, and links and resources that we think are important because we know we're dealing with some heavy subject matter here. And we, the goal would be to have to never tell a story like this again, but it, right. it is what it is. So that is the case of Shauna Grace and we're I Fry Podcast, baby. Revate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, enter our contest, I Fry Pod on Instagram, check it out. Join our Facebook group discussions every single day. I'm posting at least 10 links because I'm obsessed and that's all my timeline is. And so I love to discuss it with you guys. We have some great things coming up. Just keep a lookout for all of that. Add us on social media, tell your friends, tell your fam. Give us a us shout know. out. And please, get in on the giveaway. Yeah. See how many entries you can get. We'd love to see The more entries, the more chances out. you have of getting a free pair of Bluetooth headphones. I and mean, the what more the fuck giveaways better. we'll do. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And they're legit. Like, they're like nice-ass headphones, and they come with a beautiful case and a charger. It's just wonderful. They're, they're really an amazing product, and I wouldn't say that if I didn't actually think it. Yep. I would tell you if they were crap, and they're absolutely not. So... They They're beautiful. Be sponsors if they were to yeah, no, they wouldn't. Um, so thank you, Studio, for being our partners. Thank you to Audible for also partnering up with us for this episode. Take a listen to the book that Matt has been listening to. What's it called again? Cross the line. Cross the line. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. And Check let us out. know. I like that too, though. Yeah, and let us know. Does the punishment fit the crime? Good night, everyone. Good night. A judge today sentenced Michael Lane, the killer of Shana Grice, who was 19 years old and from Portslade, to a life in prison for at least 25 years before he can be considered for parole. On the morning of the 25th of August 2016, Shana Grice was brutally murdered in her own home by Michael Lane. Lane had become obsessed with Shana, could not accept that she did not want to be with him. This verdict will not bring Shana back, but I hope it provides some comfort to her family and friends who've had to endure a long 
and distressing trial because Lane would not confess to this horrendous crime. It took a jury just over two hours to, to find him guilty on the single charge of the murder of Shana Grice. When sentencing, the judge criticised the police for not taking her complaints about being stalked seriously, and on one occasion, they even issued her with a fixed penalty notice for wasting police time. 